Hello and welcome back to Second Cup, the talk show that's about nothing and everything all at the same time. I am your host, Tim Heller. My guest for today's episode of Second Cup Extra Cup is my good friend, Alessandra Levy. She is another badass voice actor, actor, and musician based out of Los Angeles. And you've definitely heard her voice in lots of different things and some uh, pretty cool, exciting things coming up that we weren't able to name, but uh, you will all soon find out. If you've been enjoying Second Cup, I'd like to invite you to show support for us in any of the following ways. First is by sharing episode links on social media and tagging at Tim Heller Creative. Second is by rating, leaving reviews, and subscribing in Spotify. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're consuming podcasts. Third is subscribing, liking, and commenting on our YouTube channel, Tim Heller Creative. Second Cup Playlist has all of the episodes. And finally, if you want to support financially, you can Venmo at Tim Heller Creative or reach out via email to me at tim at timhellercreative.com to discuss sponsoring one or several episodes. Any and all of these actions mean a ton and really help boost the show's visibility. And any of the financial support goes directly back into the show by sending some small gifts to my guests and hiring more people to help me manage the boatload of content I have so I can properly promote them all. Now top off your beverage, get comfy, and enjoy this episode of Second Cup Extra Cup with Alessandra Levy. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. That sounds beautiful. Can you hear me all right? Yes. I'm ready to keep it weird. Keep it weird, Austin, (laughs) Texas. (laughs) How are you feeling this morning on a scale of uh, one to ten? Um, like a six, maybe. Cool. What is uh? What's informing the six? Um, that like the weather change is like fucking with my voice a little bit, but I'm okay. Okay. I'm just in my head about it. (laughs) Yep. Literally, when we're in the booth, we are in our own head with these cans. Yeah, exactly. And I'm trying (laughs) to good. This is, like, not in the way. I was worried it was going to be, like, too in my face. I, like, pushed it off to the side. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I try to hide my face, and I'll put it, like, here. And then I'll you're like, like this just so that you're like, yeah, this is me. a cool interview. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is what uh, radio is like. Yeah. Um, Well, Alessandra, thank you so much for coming on to second cup i've been looking forward to this and thank you also for accommodating my tardiness oh it's all good it gave me some more time to make some tea and you know hell yeah now are you a morning person typically uh, on the uh, west coast or do you have to be with east coast work Um, i probably should be (laughs) (laughs) i probably should be getting up at like six but i'm not um (laughs) <laughs> I've never been a well so I'm you know I'm a musician first and so uh-huh. musicians are we you know we'd be at jam sessions until three four in the morning back in New York City so I'm usually not a morning person I mean unless you're counting like going to bed in the morning but um, these <laughs> yeah. days I guess with two dogs you know how it is with two dogs like I'll try to wake up between 7 30 and 8 mm-hmm so, I mean, I guess that's still kind of early for West Coast. I mean, meaning like if you were just working on the West Coast, that'd be earlier than like a nine o'clock thing. But I'd still, it's still already, you know, 10 or something, 1030 over yeah. on the East Coast. So I don't know. I'm I'm a, I'm a probably should be a morning person, but I'm not a morning person. More of a night owl. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. okay. So speak with all the music, New York, West Coast time, mm-hmm. dogs, all of that. Can we get, <laughs> uh, for listeners who don't know you, yeah. uh, just a, like a quick sip of who you are, where you're at now and, uh, what you do. Cause you do a lot of really cool shit. Yeah. Um, I guess, well, so yeah, I've always been a performer, like since I was a kid, you know, people would go to my parents like, oh my God, she's going to be the next Shirley Temple, get her in movies. <laughs> And my parents were like, um, we're not putting her in Hollywood. Like, if she wants to do that, she can decide when she's old enough. Uh-huh. Um, so yay for you parents, because that probably uh, prevented a lot of terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so just always like being, you know, in plays. And I started improv when I was like 13 or 14, because they had like a club in my junior high school, which was cool. And I did all the shows and I took acting classes outside of school. My mm-hmm. mom used to take me to, you know random different like playhouses in New York so I could you know I don't know learn how to become an actor and do shows and but I grew up in a musical family so everyone plays a lot of instruments in my family so on the weekends instead of 
playing video games and doing things like that because I wasn't allowed, we would just like sit around and play music together and like jam, put on a record like wow. Motown or something or like Cream. And we'd all pick an instrument and kind of play along and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, yeah, so I was kind of torn between going to school for acting or going to school for music. Um, but I feel like my high school experience in the acting, uh, like in the theater program, I just... I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go to school with these kind of people. And it wasn't anything against, like, theater people in general. I think it just, like, I had, like, a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth about it. There goes goes 60% of the audience for this podcast. So goodbye, everyone. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just just saying for me, it was, I don't know. I I just, I was kind of like, you know, I'm going to go to school for jazz. So I went to school for jazz. I played bass and, uh, and I sang at school. I wasn't a bass major, but I played bass in orchestra and um some of the uh one of the jazz on jazz vo- vocal ensembles i played bass in a a, a bluegrass songwriting group and anyway wow. so yeah i kept myself busy in college i didn't really have time to do anything acting wise in, in college so but the interesting thing about my major was that it was studio music and jazz performance so we would go into the studio we'd get music from a composer and they'd be like okay here's the thing learn it and we're going to record it so now looking back as a voice actor, I'm like, oh, that's so related, like going into a studio, learning, knew, knowing how to be on a microphone and mm-hmm. kind of cold reading something, sight reading. For um, sure. Music, sight reading and voice acting, cold reading. But yeah, that was um, kind of interesting, you know, to come back to that in a way. And then after college, um, I just kind of fell into a lot of different jobs and then I ended up being in production Um, I was a production coordinator. I was doing casting, um, just all sorts of things, AP. And then Mm -hmm. I ended up at a voiceover studio and I was a producer there and I was casting and I'd be sitting in in all the sessions that I would produce or, uh, cast because I wanted to see what it was like to see like, Hey, I started at the beginning of casting it, putting together the quotes. Okay. Now I want to see what happens when the talent goes into the studio and works with the clients. So I kind of had this like secret uh, you know, little view, I get to, I get to watch it. And then after a year or so, I was like, wait a minute, I could do this. I was an actor and you know, I know how to be in a microphone. I know how to be in a studio. And yeah. so I kind of put all those things together. And then I basically left my job with in, uh, March 9th of 2018 with no backup plans at all. And I basically just dove into being a voice actor and I'm here Fuck ever yeah. since. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and not just like here casually, but freaking crushing it. Thank you. That is so cool. I, w- uh, I just, so we've known each other for a minute, and we met through, yeah. through uh, voiceover mm-hmm. that you were, I think it was one that you were casting, right? Mm-hmm. It was, that was like the first time, the, the yeah. rat project, the, the, yeah. the Donald and, Trump and rat. I, yeah, and all your auditions, I was like, who is this guy? He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to be his friend. <laughs> um, and now we yeah, your, your auditions are so great. And... Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And then we just like stayed in touch because like, it's funny because we both sort of, I mean, I'm not producing and casting as much as I was at one point, but it's kind of funny because we both sort of put on a lot of different hats within yeah. our voiceover career. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's just like, I don't know, it, uh, one thing I've loved about, and I think we started voiceover around the similar time, too. I think I had, so I March of so. 2018 was when I had my second back surgery and was told, like, you can't do theater or film anymore. So, <sighs> like, and that's when I really pivoted into to voiceover, mm-hmm. too. That's cool. I didn't know that it was at that same, same time. Yeah, 2019 um, was, like, the first calendar year that I was like, okay. I am a full-time voice actor. <laughs> I wasn't, but I, I mean, I was by the end of the year, but at the beginning of the year, I wasn't. Yeah. I was just sort of same. fairy fairy tales I was telling myself. Like, yeah, I'm a full-time voice actor. <laughs> yeah, that's same. That was my first year of making enough to be like, oh, mm-hmm. this is kind of covering some bills or, or yeah. the bills in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like me. By the end of the year, I was like, oh, wow, okay. This is cool. But I think also um, to kind of go back to how I sort of decided that it was sort of um, the studio that I was working at, the voiceover studio. Um, You know, there were some things that I think maybe I'm just like not good at having um, bosses. I don't know. (laughs) But um, (laughs) there were just some things and I was like, I don't know. I want to kind of work for myself. And 
Um, and then actually a really, really dear friend of mine, um, passed from breast cancer and that went to her brain. And, um, mm. she was someone who just like lived every day. Like she was just like so happy to be alive and doing her job. And this was even before her cancer. Like she was just that person who yeah. was like, um, she was, she ended up being a librarian for teens and she would like come up with all these fun programs for the kids to get them involved at the library. And I don't know, she just lived every day. Like she loved what she was doing and she really put all of her passion into it. And I just remember like after she passed, I would be taking the train into the, into the city, which normally the train would take me about 20 minutes to get to work. But at that time, mm -hmm. whatever was going on with the subways, it would take me like 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. And I'm just like sitting on the train, like, oh my gosh, I'd walk into work. I'd be dreading it. And I'm like, what am I doing? This is like, this is not okay. You know, my mental yeah, health this is just isn't like it. in the trash. Um, just feeling like, why, why am I, why am I actually doing this? If I'm dreading going to work, there's some friction between, you know, certain people, like I'm not enjoying myself at all. And just realizing that life is so precious and I cannot spend an, another day doing something that is not bringing me joy. I mean, there were aspects of it that were fun, obviously, like I said, but overall I was dreading waking up to come to work and yeah that's not an existence you know no that's not it that's not cute and i, mm -hmm. I so when with with voiceover like how, what was that period just I, I love talking to people about this and i know that some feedback i've gotten from people or comments on episodes is like we'd love to hear more from voice actors and like how did you go full time how do you go out for these types of jobs but like what was that process for you of looking at okay i'm i'm was it like I'm just going to quit and commit to this and hope for the best or like make educated and an educated attack on this career. Or was it like I'm um, doing this job and miserable and also doing voiceover on the side and then voiceover took over. Yeah. So I think when I worked, so I worked at the studio from, I think October, 2016. And then I left March, 2018. So I don't know, I guess it's like a year and a half almost, but anyway, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not good at math, so don't quote me on that. But, um, I was, I mean, I had maybe booked one or two jobs as a talent when I was working as a producer or casting. Every once in a while, my coworker would be like, Hey, you know, I'm just going to like throw you in just to in the mix and see if the client likes you. And I don't think I only booked one or two when I was working there. I was really focused on just being a producer and casting and like doing a great job, which I was. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, you know, just doing my thing. Um, but actually it was kind of this thing where, like I said, the, the sort of passing of a, a dear friend, like really made me just stop in my tracks and reassess my life. And, um, it sucks that something like that has to happen for you to sometimes have a realization like that, but yeah. I'll be forever, um, you know. I don't want to say grateful, but I think it, it was this pivotal moment for me to real, to reassess my life and think like, what am I actually doing? So I was not doing voiceover on the side. I was not, um, I was just like fully a producer. Um, I mean, I get auditions t from time to time, but it wasn't my real focus. So then when I left in, in March, I basically threw myself into classes and workshops and private coaching and, I wasn't even doing it full time. And you know, it's not like I had a lot of money, but I was throwing any money at getting proper training and really just trying to set myself up. And then in October of 2018, I did a, um, a retreat with Randy Thomas and Debbie mm -hmm. Derryberry and Paul Liberti and David Alden, who um, is a producer at CBS for promos and things like that. And J Michael Collins and all these like heavy hitters, you know, and it's, it was at that retreat that I realized like, okay, I can play with the big, the big people, you know, like I can, mm -hmm. I can be competitive in this. Like I, I think I have a future in this. And I think, and by the way, I was still no job, just like f flying myself over to LA to do, to do this retreat. Like I did not have That's this so money, That's but scary, I was just yeah. like, yeah, I, it's not that I don't think things think things through. I do, but I also am just very sure that when I want to do something, I just do it all in and I'm like, I'm going to crush this. I'm going to give it the all I can. And I feel like for me, 
getting another job would just distract me and I would just fall into the same trap again of like coming home and then not wanting to be creative because I was just tired from a full-time job or something. So yeah, That's I so basically inspiring just... <laughs> to hear. Have you always had, has, has, I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, no. I'm like, I, I just love that part of your personality. And that's something <laughs> that I think what attracts me to that is because I, I feel that similar draw to things, but I think I'm, I, I have more fear and resistance mm -hmm. to committing to it. And, and as I've gotten older and, and gone full time and I have this blank canvas in front of me with yeah. work, it's like, there's a healthier dose of fuck it. Have you always had that voice and, and action be loud and strong in front? Or is that something that you've had to develop? No, it's always been like that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we could fucking curse on here. My God. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, just let it loose. This is... Um. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, some every once in a while, I'll be really interested and, like, ask my parents what I was like when I was a kid. Because I think um, we all kind of have that moment. I guess what maybe when we're in our sometime maybe mid to late 20s or 30s, I feel like we kind of come back around to, like, wanting to sort of indulge our little kid again or at least that's mm -hmm. how i felt but oh, i sure. i find sometimes i'll ask my parents like hey you know was i always like xyz or did i always blah 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 and my mom will say that i pretty much always knew exactly what i wanted from like an age that's way too young to know like <laughs> two you know just being like <laughs> alessandra is so sure in what she wants to do and she's gonna do it and she's independent and she's gonna go for it and so, yeah, I don't know. I guess I was just like, I mean, who knows? I don't even know what it is, but that's just how I've been. So, yeah, I think there's yeah. always been a sort of, no, I want to do this and I'm just going to go for it. And like, it's just going to work because it has to basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so after that retreat, that's where I interrupted. After the retreat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After the retreat, I came home and, you know, it was obviously like now November and I'm like, you know what? Okay. 2019, I'm just going to like go for it. I'm going to be a full-time voice actor. I'm going to treat everything as if like th it's my business already, even though it wasn't a business yet. And just like, you know, at the time that we started voiceover, a lot of people were just kind of doing it on their own. It's not like maybe back, you know, 20 years ago where you had to kind of get an agent first and then do that kind mm -hmm. of track. It was almost like, I just kind of had to figure it out on my own. But thankfully, as a producer, I had known how to reach out to people. I had known how to know my value as far as, like, quoting. I was very familiar with yeah. the GVAA. I was obviously familiar with, um, you know, how to figure out union rates, all this kind of stuff. So I had that knowledge in, in the back pocket, which was obviously really helpful for then me to kind of switch and be like, oh, no, I'm on the talent side now. But kind of having those understandings of how to quote things, how to ask about usage and not take things in perpetuity. Like I mm -hmm. had that knowledge because as a producer, I knew that already. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I just started t 2019 and, and again, still didn't have a job, just was doing voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so <laughs> badass. And I hope that anybody who's listening and is thinking about getting into voiceover and how to approach it, heard heard all of that and that it's sitting with them and also heard that you like just dove into training first because that is the most important part and taking mm -hmm. lots of different classes. And mm -hmm. what you did, which I am trying to be better about in with myself now, is that putting yourself out there and get mm -hmm. it not just like on social media, but putting yourself out there in front of real people or or even mm -hmm. just through Zoom. And I I've yeah. just recently started to join like a workout group and put myself out there with uh, the casting director from Lucasfilm. And it's the best thing I've, I've done in the past year of my business. Yeah, because that's it's just awesome. you get feedback, whether it's uh, a constructive positive or like mm -hmm. really specific, con like negative or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But it's it's given me a confidence boost to be like, OK, cool. Like, even though I feel a little isolated where I'm at in Austin, mm -hmm. I I know what I'm doing. I do like I do have those chops, like you said, to play with the big dogs, and mm -hmm. it's and it's just a matter of of getting yourself out there and doing it, and yeah, and and, and just diving in, like you like you have yeah. and continue to do. Yeah, um, I'll never forget a phone conversation I had. I was I went to one of the little conference rooms at 
at the studio and I like called my husband, Steve, and I was like, Hey, so I'm going to like do this thing. I'm going to leave. And you know, I'm like, you know, am I making the right decision? Like, am I, you know, and he's like, well, you know, if it were me, I'd probably have a backup plan first lined up. So that way, like just for him personally, but he Mm -hmm. was like, but that's just me. Like you need to do what is best for you. And I was like, Mm. okay, well, what's best for me is just leaving and just kind of like throwing caution to the wind and being like, well, I'll figure it out, (laughs) you know? So yeah, yeah, it's just interesting because I know that that's not a common, there's not a large percentage of people that would do that. Although who knows now maybe post, I mean, we're not post COVID, but like post maybe lockdown, I feel like a lot more people have kind of liberated themselves from things that aren't making them happy. So I don't know if that's like maybe that is like a a societal and cultural shift that's happening. But I just know for me, I've kind of always been like that. I'm like, oh, if I'm not happy, I'm leaving immediately. Like I'm bouncing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's and the other the other huge gift is is to have a partner like that. I think that's something that Mm -hmm. you and I both have is is Mm -hmm. significant others that are just yes, you should do this. So when I feel Mm -hmm. like nervous or worried about something, I can go to Jess and she can be like, no, Tim, you're obviously not happy doing something or you're Mm -hmm. not happy on this project or with this client. You know what to do. Like you just, (laughs) you just have to Mm -hmm. do it. And it's, it's lucky. And I don't know if it's rare or not, like, but I feel fortunate and to have a partner who also is an artist and your partner also is an artist. Yes. And I think that's Um, why that's where where the extra support comes from because they understand they're in the same boat. Like, yeah, I think that's, that's probably a big part of it. And I don't know. I mean, I've, well, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think partners come in all sorts of uh, ranges of how supportive, but I do agree that if you are with someone who is also creative and also an artist or performer or some sort of creative person who kind of works for themselves and does their own thing, they're going to be much more supportive. They get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So going back really quick, rewinding to yes. improv as a kid, what did yes. improv do for you? It has such a special place in my heart because I feel <laughs> yeah. like it, it saved, it kind of saved me a little bit when we mm-hmm. moved from California to the Chicago area because I just felt weird. I felt out of place. I was in fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade, and my parents found this improv studio in Libertyville, mm-hmm. Illinois. A shout out to the improv playhouse and Dave Stewart. But it just created this sense of confidence and a community and uh, this love of making people laugh that was like disarming Mm -hmm. and helped help help me personally with bullies and helped me kind of survive Mm -hmm. that like period of life of like kids being brutal because they're hurting in other ways. Right. Yeah. A a healthy, healthy way to cope. Or they have shitty parents. But yeah, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Here's that's, um, that's the Midwest versus the East Coast and us coming out. <laughs> you're like, yeah, they're hurting inside. I'm like, no, their parents are like, shitheads. No, fuck their parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> their parents didn't teach them manners, and they're mad. They're bad people themselves. No. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. I. I don't know. I feel like improv for me was just really freeing and fun, but also. I just remember that improv was like a part of my family, like whether or Mm. not it was labeled that it wasn't. But um, like I said, you know, both of my parents are musicians, but my dad used to act in like, you know, college plays and things like that. And like he, I think in another life could have been a comedian, an actor, like he gives, he, his presence is larger than life. Like he's kind of like your, I don't know. But anyway, so I feel like before bed, like, you know, when you want bedtime stories, whatever, like my dad and I would just like improvise stories and my dad would do little accents and he's a linguist. So he knows like six or seven languages fluently and he does accents and whatever. So I feel like for me at a very young age, you know, like anywhere from starting at one or two, like he was just, these bedtime stories were improvised and they would like kind of evolve and make me laugh and We kind of, then when I got old enough to kind of play off of him, we would sort of make up stories and do little like role playing, improvise things. And yeah, so I feel like it was kind of already just in my, I don't know, it was already on my radar. Yeah, it was just already happening in my house. So then by the time I was in junior high school and I joined the improv club, I was like, oh, this is so fun. And like just learning how to 
kind of go with what's given to you and then expand upon it. And uh, I don't know. So I feel like it was just really fun for me. I don't necessarily know if it impacted me on like a like so much in like an emotional or mental way. I think it was just like a fun sort of freeing sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do understand uh, being bullied. I was bullied a lot because I was in all these like social justice groups when I was younger. I was like the, one of the founding members of our gay straight alliance back in like 2002 or something. And I remember uh -huh. being bullied every day for that. And like, I would sit at tables at lunch and our friends would get like food thrown at us and just like all this kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, I'm, you know, and it's funny cause I'm just like, I don't ever really think about people like from that era, but I'm just thinking now, like, imagine, like, I just wonder how bad they feel about <laughs> like when they were just being such yeah. jerks. Because, yeah. you know, of course, now it's now it's all cool to be accepting of, you know, of anyone who's on the LGBTQ plus QIA sort of spectrum. But like back then it was like, you know, everyone's like, oh, that's so gay and blah, 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 blah. And that's exactly the groups that I was in. Like I was in the justice group and all these sort of things. And I'm thinking like all these people now are probably like trying to be want to be social justice warriors. And meanwhile, they were like bullying me and my friends for just trying to open people's minds back in the early 2000s. So I don't know. It's just kind of interesting to me to think about yeah. the shift it's, in that. It's weird to think about high school. And, mm -hmm. and because, I mean, not only like were we all different, but the world was entirely mm -hmm. different. And I think like I know that I probably hurt some people's feelings because of the pain that I was feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And like because I was being bullied in some way. And I mm -hmm. remember like somebody – tried to pick a fight with me because they they called what I was doing gay in theater mm -hmm. and dance and like they were like I, I can't count how many times I was called the F word and because mm. I played sports and, and did theater and dance and like and it's just like it's stupid right but it's and I like I remember like I know I must have lashed out at somebody for mm. doing that right and tried to oh, dig I did, deep yeah. in and like, and, and I think about that. I'm like, I feel bad for doing that now because that's just like who I am. I'm like, I feel bad. Right. I should not have lashed out, but also was being provoked. Right. And so, I mean, but it's, and it's, yeah. but, and, but people grow and like, but it is funny to see like people who like on this soccer team I used to play on who used to like kind of beat me up a little bit mm -hmm. and see them on LinkedIn and just like in their picture like this. Now it's like a VP of sales. And I'm like, I know that if I saw them again, they probably haven't thought like twice about mm -hmm. that, but that was a pivotal part of me. Mm -hmm. And my dad <laughs> <laughs> like is this ray of light and his name's Ray. And so he likes to make sure that everybody knows that he's mm -hmm. a ray of sunshine. I love that. Is, uh, he, he will like see those same people and be like, oh man, I, Tim, I saw this like a X person pop up on my LinkedIn today as somebody I should know. And part of me wanted to like be like, hey, do you remember when you fucking kicked the shit out of my son? Look at what he's doing now. I'm like, dad. <laughs> Sounds like you and my dad have a lot in common. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny to think back at that and, and, and I don't yeah. know. It's just weird. Um, yeah. I mean, it definitely shapes who we are. And, you know, it's it's not false when people say like people who have been through a lot, you know, use humor to cope, use humor to deflect, use humor to oh, yeah. sort of bring people in, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of be like, no, but I'm funny. See, like you can you don't have to bully me because I'm making you laugh, you know, that kind of. Yeah, thing. I'm I mean, accessible that's... or like it's disarming. It's mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely I didn't realize that I used humor as. A coping mechanism until mm -hmm. uh, I started dating Jess, just because mm -hmm. she is so emotional, so much more emotionally intelligent than I am that she mm -hmm. can like she's a, she's my tuning fork and she's mm -hmm. just like, okay, why are you she's doing like, that? Well, I see what you're doing. You yeah. don't need to make a joke out of that because I see you screaming on the inside. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh no, she can see me. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> run away. Yeah, she can see me, girl. <laughs> Wait, you could you can see that? You, you could. You Wait, you can see no. that? Damn it. Shit. Tuck it back in. Tuck it back in. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's good to have someone like that who mm -hmm. compliments us and balances us. And yeah. Yeah. So with the beginning of your voiceover career, what were some of the teachers who were who were the teachers and what were some of the classes that you took to kind of um, to just start 
collecting data on, on the VO world? Yeah, um, my first classes were with Anna Gardunio. Mm. And um, she was amazing. I, I just loved the environment that she created because it was in her apartment. It was just us hanging in her living, you know, in her living room area. She would have a stack of scripts like this high and you would pick a script. You would, you know, or sometimes she would hand one out to you and you'd go around. You, you, everyone would get up at her mic that she set up because she wanted us to learn mic technique for those of us who hadn't had mic technique. Um, and you know, she would just, everything with her was love, just love you know i mean obviously she'd, she'd give uh adjustments and she'd redirect you and say you know this sounded a little this why don't we try this and but it was all just with so much love and her whole thing made me really just believe that anyone can do this there is a place for mm. anyone in this Hell yeah. and so i got i got kind of lucky because i think that anyone who studies with her realizes that very quickly that she is just supportive and loving and truly believes in every single person um which is amazing and refreshing because as you know if you're coming from the on-camera world which i know we both have done i was also producing and casting in that so i mean it's not like that at all it's like oh no. you don't look the part bye even if you're talented bye don't care yeah you don't fit yeah. so she was someone who was crucial to my beginnings um, but then what I did was in the summer of 2019, I decided I'm going to go to, I'm going to live in LA for two months and I'm going to take five classes a week <laughs> with different, crap. with different people and different workshops and different <laughs> things. And I ended up, um, living with my dear, dear friend, Lori Allen, not to name drop or anything, but she actually is my dear, like sister from another <laughs> mister. <laughs> and um, I ended up living with her for two and a half or yeah, about two and a half, two months or something in L.A. And I'd say, yeah, four or five times a week I was at a class and I took classes with Charlie Adler. I took a five week course with him. And boy, did that blow my fucking mind. Um, mm -hmm. I just had uh, somebody yeah. tell me this morning to take class with him yeah. and that I could, and I've always thought of that. I'm like, that would be so fun. And I'm so curious because yes. of his just the snippets I mean, of he's personality like my, seen, but... I mean, Rocco's Modern Life is like my favorite of all time. Yeah. And the fact that he was Mr. and Mrs. Big Head and the boss at the, um, I forgot what the place is called. But anyway, so yeah. I just was like, and also, you know, he was in um, Ah Real Monsters and he was Chicken and Cat. Like, I mean, he's just iconic. He was our right? childhood. Yeah, yeah. And so taking with him and it was once a week for five weeks, that really blew my mind open. And he just he was so brutally honest and like if he didn't like something he's just like stop stop what the hell was that and like but not in a way that you were like scared of him or like abusive it just you just it's like you got to know his personality and it was just his personality he is just larger than life just so eccentric but in the best way possible you know yeah that, like, a supportive like, it's like it's safe and it but it's not that old school theater mentality of i need to break you because of my pain no, it's, and like, I it's just like no let's and not I waste didn't our feel time that way no not at all but he just was he like just i don't know the best way to describe him is he's just so alive and <laughs> just so <clears throat> passionate you know and i loved that that was the first time i had you know worked with someone like that i mean besides him being like just an icon for me but yeah, yeah so i worked with with charlie i also obviously worked with Lori as i was living with her but even before i was living with her that's the reason why it all kind of worked out because i'd been taking a couple privates with her mm -hmm. and then i did another five or five maybe six weeks with um richard horvitz who was another icon of our I did too he was yeah. my first coach yeah richard's amazing um you know and he's you know obviously He's all about playing and just getting in the sandbox and playing and just, I don't know. He's amazing. So Yeah, I'd, I, I referred a bunch of people to him mm -hmm. because I, I took with him after I had done, my first group class was with Andy Roth and it was a five-week class, which mm -hmm. I'd love to hear that you did that as well with um, mm -hmm. 
with Charlie because I think that mm-hmm. if you're going to take a voiceover class, take one that is several weeks long because not only yep. do you learn their personality, but they learn how to communicate with you mm-hmm. and in the most effective way. And it's really just you build relationships. And that's oh, like yeah. the, I feel like is the, the backbone of building any kind of business is the relationships that mm-hmm. you build. Because the people look out for you and the people will commiserate with you and celebrate mm-hmm. you and, and help kind of guide you as you and I have done through the our, our relationship. It's like, yep. or, or play Mario Party at 11 o'clock at night with you when mm-hmm. your wife is out of town. And it's... Exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I really think, yeah, so that's exactly what I did when I was over there for that two two month trial. And I just was like, I, because I was sort of like, do I want to move here? Or like, do actually at the time it was like, do I want to be by coastal where it's like instead of because i was visiting la kind of frequently for like you know obviously like i told you retreats and other sort of like voiceover mm-hmm. related things and so my thought was like okay do we kind of keep a, a place in new york and then kind of make la our home base and that that actually was the thought but i was like i don't know if we're gonna do it and then at the end of the two months i think steve came to visit me he met up with a few of his music industry friends and by the end of the trip was like oh we need to move here and i was like what? Because huh. meanwhile, I was the one who was sort of like, I don't know, maybe he's not going to buy it if I'm like, oh, I think I need to be here for my career, whatever. And he was the one who was like, oh, we should definitely be here. Like, I feel like this is where we need to be. And I had been feeling it, but I'd, I was like, not scared. Tuning but... fork. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so the plan was that we were going to uh, get here and have our place in New York and then make L.A. our home base and kind of travel back and forth. But when we got here, it was December 31st, 2019. So obviously that didn't work out because... Just before. Right. So we we had maybe three good months in LA and then we went into lockdown. So obviously we didn't go back to New York. And I didn't even go back to New York until last November. So it was a long time, almost two years since I'd seen friends and family. Um, But yeah, so I, I think that that two month experience of just being like, yeah, I'm just going to go to LA and take classes. And again, sort of throw myself into the fire with, yeah, I was going to say you like really did like, that's intense. That's something I, what (laughs) honestly almost verbatim, what I had told Jess, I'm like, I I feel like Mm -hmm. I'm, I need to go do this, but I just didn't because I was afraid. And like, we were money's the thing and all of this Mm -hmm. stuff, but that's so, that's so badass that you just like, yeah. So another time I'm just realizing now another time where I just went, well, let's just see what happens. And I went and, you know, I, I basically, yeah, I took, I was so exhausted. Like I took four or five classes a week and some of them were like a consistent, oh, I took like a work, um, a weekly workout class with, um, uh, oh, I forgot his name. Mitch, huh? Mitch, no, not Mitch. Yeah. Mitch. Uh, oh, I hope oh, you God. can edit this out. <laughs> I'm bad. Like no, just... there's no editing. It's all permanent for the rest oh, of time. Oh, no, I'm flailing. Um, oh, God, why can't I remember his name? Uh-oh. Well, I don't remember we'll his name. It. He's the one who does the um, the voice match for um, Jack Black. Why can't I remember his name? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm... Uh, okay. What that... the heck? I took a class with him. I took a workout with him to the every internet. week. I... Listen to I. He was on uh, Rob Paulson's podcast too. God, and his name's I, not Mitch. I don't know why I said that. Yeah, Mitch Foley. No, Mick Foley. No, what's his name? Just like making up names now. I know. Oh, I know where we can find name? this. He did the. He did all the Kung Fu Panda. Yes. Uh, uh, cartoon series. Oh. Um. Who is it? Mick. No, Mitch. Why do I want to say it's an M name? Oh, Lord. I mean, not that he's ever going to listen to this, but if so, I feel so bad. I'll find a way to get it to him. Don't worry. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> anyway, no, he was Mick great. Wingert. To- Mick Wingert. Mick. Mick Wingert. There it Wingert. is. First try. That's We nailed it. <laughs> God. <laughs> anyway, I took a weekly workout class with him. That was also great. Mick. I kept saying Mitch. Okay. Anyway, so he was great too. So those three, the, you know, Richard Horvitz, Charlie and Mick, I took weekly with them. And then the other two classes that I would take a week were just sort of like, you know, one at um, Real Voice LA with like Ariana Rat- uh, Ratner, or like who, you know, a guest, um, a guest uh, teacher, something like that. Mm-hmm. 
And so, yeah, I would just sort of fill my schedule. Um, and that was really, I mean, it was exhausting, but it was also exactly what I needed to do to kind of decide, like, you know, because when you're in voiceover, you don't know where you're going to land. You don't know if you're like, hey, I'm more of a commercial person or like, oh, you know what? I'm like only trailers and promos or like, you know what? I'm actually just like totally video games. I can't book a commercial or, you know. And it can change and evolve it, right. year to year, week to week. It can be, mm -hmm. or depending on who your agents are, who you see, like whatever it is. Right. But. So, so yeah, I think for me, it was more of like an exploratory thing because I mean, of course, you know, a lot of voice actors become voice actors because they want to be in an animated show or they want to be in a video game if they love video games. So I know that that's sort of the track that most people want to do. But obviously I think also too, with like my singing background, I was like, well, a lot of kids animation is like, they need you to sing also. And mm -hmm. also they need you to sing in character, which is like, not everyone who can sing can also sing in character. And like, yeah, if that's one thing that I found. I'm like, I feel so yeah. much more confident with my singing voice when I'm singing mm -hmm. as a character. I feel like I sing better mm -hmm. in character than I feel I sing with my normal voice. I love that. That's amazing. But yeah, I mean, that's true though, right? Because if, if you've created this character and this character lives inside of you and you can't sing as that character, like that's going to be a discrepancy if, if they're going to mm -hmm. hire you. Is that a Furby in the background? No, it's, oh, oh my gosh. I got so, <laughs> I was like, one, I'll I'm bring sorry. it closer. Maybe it's a minion? It's a minion. Surprise, oh. surprise. Oh my God. It's Darth I... Vader. <gasps> As a minion, is that a Funko? And it's a. Thing? Let me see if I can. I found so I found this in the uh, in the subway in Seoul, Korea, when we were, we were living there doing Jekyll and Hyde the musical. Jess and I both got cast in it, so we lived there for like seven months, and we came back what? to Seoul for like the last three months of the tour. And uh, in the Gangnam train station, they have all of these shops, and it's mm -hmm. so it's like you know what they've done with the like the subway near. Um, Columbus Circle with all those yes. shops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's like that in Korea, but like cleaner, bigger, and they've got cool shit like this. And <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the baby. <laughs> Here you go, in two different forms. <laughs> um, I don't, okay, okay, anyway, sorry. I thought for some reason that that was a Furby. Anyway, no. I Darth totally Vader got sidetracked. Me. My bad. Yes. I don't even have, you know... ADHD, but I just, I just really got very distracted by what I, I thought was I haven't been diagnosed yet, but I feel like it's, it's, it's underlying. It's right there. What were, we the what were we talking about? Oh gosh. I Fuck derailed I the podcast. No, I'm kidding. We were talking about, um, training and all oh, of yeah. that and kind of that, that two months in LA that you spent. Yeah, that was, that was definitely, that was definitely key. I mean, it was exhausting, but it was definitely worth it. Oh, I know. We're talking about different aspects of voiceover yes, and singing. singing and character and all that kind of stuff. Okay. We're back and we're back. Thank you. Back. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm a nineties kid. I grew up uh, watching all of the Nickelodeon, uh, Nick, I, I wasn't a, when I was a kid, I wasn't really a Cartoon Network kid or a Disney kid. I was a straight up Nickelodeon kid. Like mm. every day after school, it was like, what's on Nickelodeon? It was like Ren and Stimpy and, you know, and which yep. my parents were always like, Alessandra, this show is so this gross. Is, Why do you We weren't allowed like to watch Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life. So we only got snippets no! of those because it was just, it was weird. And it was kind of freaky too. Like Those two are my I favorite shows though. We, That's so sad. We, we liked them, but it was just kind of like, because I'm the oldest of three. And so we had, <laughs> I had my little brother and my little sister as well. And so they mm -hmm. like, I feel like had... I, had they been older, had we all been older during that time, it wouldn't have been mm -hmm. a problem. My parents aren't prude about TV or anything like that, but they were just like, right. this is kind of weird. And like, we're not sure what this is going to do to your brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, but like, ah, real monsters was this is what it does. <laughs> hey kids. <laughs> um, but the, and yeah. then we'd watch courage, the cowardly dog, which was another like, <laughs> yeah, total mind fuck. Yeah. See, like, yeah, my parents would be like, oh, whenever they zoom in, it's just horrifyingly disgusting. I'm like, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> which, like, you know, which now, if you think about it, um, SpongeBob took a lot of that from, because I think they had similar animators. Absolutely. At the, like, they did the, the zoom ins where, like, everything would be, like, just disgusting and horrifying, but, like, mm -hmm. it's so funny. Anyway, so, like, Ren and Stimpy and Doug and Ah Real Monsters mm -hmm. and. Rocco's Modern Life was my favorite until SpongeBob came along. Although I feel like still Rocco is like just, 
I think because I was just young when it came out and I just yeah. loved it. Anyway, but Rocket Power. Rocket Power. Uh, Angry Beavers, which Richard is one of the yep. beavers. Like, yeah, you know, it's hard not to when you start to meet these people and work with them. It's like hard not to be like, oh my god. Oh my god! I was like that for the whole five weeks, and then he also produced my commercial demo too. So mm-hmm. I, and was really pivotal in like mm-hmm. helping me navigate kind of like a tough beginning period that I was. I had gone yeah. through like a couple things, and he was just like, "You got this! Like, let's just do it!" And I was like, "Yeah, you're just the bomb." You're I know a, he's so sweet. sweet, and I got man. to and I got to like be, go to his his little studio every week, which was awesome. Tika Street Productions. That's yeah, awesome. got to go there. Which was so cool. I was like, oh man, you live you live here. It's cool. I like this studio. And he had like a cool like recording sign outside of his booth, which I always thought was like so cool. Um <laughs> But yeah, so I mean I think I think uh, you know, just like a lot of voice actors, I was like a kid who grew up on animation at cartoons and was like, Ooh, I'd love to be in one of these. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the trip to LA to be like, is this something that is worth sort of putting s- some other eggs in this basket, you know, because I didn't want to put all of my eggs in one basket or, or another, because um, obviously a lot of people will say, you know, oh, when you get into voiceover, you know, commercials are the bread and butter. They're the things that are going to gonna get give you nice royalty or uh, nice uh, residual checks if it's mm-hmm. union and all this kind of stuff. And so people are like, hey, you know, you got to get your commercials down first because that's the most important that's like sort of the what's the most what we're getting the most of in auditions and also what because you know we're we're inundated on our tvs and our phones and our computers with commercials it's every like, podcast all of it so yeah that's that's the main thing but yeah i think for me it was sort of like a discovery of like you know yes i know i love animation and of course now as an adult now i have video games because i am i can do whatever i want and we are um, big kids with adult money exactly and so for me it was sort of like okay yeah i know i like these things but can i actually hang could i be given an animation script and can i hang with everyone else on them yeah and so that was sort of like the discovery that i wanted to make for myself and so yeah that's why i made that trip and then she learned she could indeed hang i could hang (laughs) <laughs> that's like that's like a a very like musician jazz kind of term like oh yeah he, you know yeah kid can hang he could he could play yeah. kid can play yeah he can hang <laughs> that's awesome and so now what is your what does your vo life look like and and it, for those for those curious about like what the life of a full time voice actor looks like. Mm-hmm. What is the, I know, and for me at least, it changes day to day, week to week mm-hmm. uh, for, for certain things. But yeah. what does it look like for you? Okay, well, I'll give you an example of yesterday. So, yesterday morning, I woke up at seven because I had a uh, session at 8 a.m. with clients in London. Um, and because I'm on the West Coast, I, mm-hmm. I don't like to do sessions earlier than eight if I can help it, only because I like to give myself, as a singer, you know, I like to give yeah, myself a lot of time up. to warm up and not sound groggy, groggy in, in the basement. And I just want to get my voice sounding to like a warm place. So I woke up at seven. I went, uh, you know, I got some tea. I did my warm ups. I had my session at eight. Then after the session was done, I went to my email. I looked at all the, you know, auditions that I had for my manager. And, uh, I started doing auditions and I think, um, I, after a few, I took a break so I could take the dogs for a walk and like eat breakfast and do all the things that I need to do to take care of myself. And then basically come back home, go back in the booth, maybe come out for air to like go to the bathroom or get a snack, then kind of rinse and repeat. So that's kind of what most of the days are like. It's, um, I mean, I'm also very 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 lucky to have the management i do because most often i'm sending anywhere from like 10 to sometimes 20 auditions a day i mean yeah there's been days where it's been that many with acm there's some days of course where there's like you know seven or five but most of the time it's like 10. i mean i just have like folders and folders of auditions you know (laughs) Um, yeah. so I will say it takes up like a lot of my day and then obviously bookings are in between those auditions and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I've only had a few in studio sessions since I've moved here, obviously because we were in lockdown. I had mm-hmm. one in studio session at the end of 2020 
when we were like mm-hmm. still wearing the masks in the studio and like I would take it off in between each take. It was like very sort of a little yeah, When scary. we had no idea what the hell was going yeah, on. Yeah, we had no idea. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted us in person because I was working with a, it was like supposed to be like a husband and wife in a car for like a Verizon commercial. Mm-hmm. And so we could, they wanted us in person so we could play off of each other. Although like, I'm sure now they realize that we could have just done it. Like that. It, it would have been the same late, probably no latency, even if we were home, but I get what they were doing. Um, and then la, uh, I don't know if I did any in, in, in person last year, but this year I've done about maybe five or six in person. So I think it's starting to come. One recently at, without saying what the project is. <sighs> yeah. I saw that look on your face. You're like, don't you? No, no, no. It's <laughs> but, fine. Like, but like at a very cool studio, mm-hmm. which was Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely surreal. I mean, I think also another full circle moment is like when I did live with Lori, not giving her location away, but I would often, when I was driving to and from classes, they're in Burbank. And so in Burbank mm-hmm. also is the Warner Brothers Studios, the lot. Yeah. And I That's remember- That's where just, like 90% yeah. of the animation is in LA, right? Yeah. And I would just drive past it and I'd be like, wow, that's the, that's the big water tower. That's, that's Warner brothers. Like these are sound stages and movie stages. And I would just be like, wow, it'd be so cool to be there one day. And you know, now I can be like, Hey, I went there and hopefully not just once. Hopefully I'll go back again. Yeah. You just started your journey there and it is mm-hmm. a great first time, uh, for many returns. Yeah, it was um, it was definitely a, a pinch me surreal moment for sure, because I think it was sort of another realization like, oh, I live in Los Angeles. I don't live in New York. I mean, obviously, I know where I live, but I think it's hard when you've kind of been home for so long. And it's just like yeah. you forget that. Like, I think those are the moments where you're like, oh, I'm here. I'm on a lot like and I'm, you're hanging. I'm hanging. <laughs> Kid could play. Kid could play, you know? Kid could play. Kid could play. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was, that was cool. Yeah. it's And it's yeah, awesome. My, my... And this it looks different for everybody, right? But mm-hmm. it's when you are hanging as mm-hmm. as you are, it's <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. it's, that's what the life looks like. Yeah. I mean, and also, you know, I will say there are plenty of days that are like, oh, I guess I'm just going to kind of hang out with my dogs, take them on an extra long walk and maybe do a couple auditions. Maybe if I feel up to it, follow up with some previous clients, maybe do a little bit of marketing. But, um, I will say I'm much better in person, which is why I feel like I've struggled so much over the past couple of years because Mm -hmm. I am the person who like, when I also was out here in 2019 for the summer, I was going to networking events on the like after classes or, you know, on the week, whatever, like any other mm-hmm. time. And I really thrive in those because that's just my personality. Like I love yeah. meeting people. I love just going up to talk to people, not to be like, hi, I'm a voice actor. Do you want to hire me? Like, not like that. Just me being just genuinely uh-uh. me and chatting and like interested in what people's backgrounds are and just sort of getting to know people. And, you know, so for me, it feels like, that is going to, that's something that has always been more of a strong suit for me that versus like just sending emails, which I mean, I still get, um, I still have gotten some great clients just by reaching out, um, and emailing and saying, Hey, you know, I, I have, I have source connect and I see you have a roster of talent. I'd love to be added that kind of thing. Of course I've had luck with that and I've gotten some repeat clients from those, but I think just in general, I'm just so much better in person. <laughs> like I'm the kind of person yeah. that like maybe I look good on pa- I look okay on paper, but I look way better not on paper in real life. And so, <laughs> so because you know I don't know it's just so much more about your personality and like if you're reliable and if you just have some charm, you're likable, whatever. You just get along well with people, good manners, what all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so yeah, I feel like there are some days when. Um, it's not as busy with auditions or bookings. And so you kind of have to find the time of like, what do you need? I mean, I think the pandemic or, you know, the lockdown specifically taught us all at least to sort of take a, take a breather. I know for me, I've never known how to, uh, I think before then I never had a day where I just did nothing. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not a, I'm not, that's not a brag. I'm not being like, oh yeah, I just like never took breaks. And like, I just was like, go, go, go. And never, you know, I'm like always whatever. That's not a brag. (laughs) If anything, it has caused a lot of like health things, you know, where it's like, oh, and your adrenals have failed, you know, like it's not a good thing. You are depleted. Right. Like, are you sleeping all day? Like, I remember actually kind of side, side thing really quick was like when I was in LA for the taking five class I mean that's just nuts like taking four or five classes a week whatever and I remember my doctor was like your blood work came back and like are you sleeping all the time like how are you exhausted right and I'm like no why I don't take naps I'm not tired and she's like you have like the highest number of Epstein-Barr virus I've ever seen she's like you should be bedridden and I was like oh I don't take naps. Like, I'm fine. I'm pretty and good. She was, yeah. She's like, you need to take it easy. And I was like, well, the thing about that is I'm in L.A. and I'm taking four and my And I classes. can't. <laughs> so can't really do that. And she's like, well, you need to sleep during the day and then, like, do your thing at night. And I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. So anyway, long story short is I think it was a good lesson in learning that I need to <laughs> take some breaks. <laughs> I don't even drink coffee. <laughs> this is just me, like, right, just regular, you know. Bottle that shit and sell it. And so, yeah, I definitely think there there are definitely days now where it's like I need to take a day to just kind of, you know, work out and maybe meditate, you know, well, not maybe meditate, I meditate every day, at least maybe twice, once or twice a day. And so it's like I have to take time to do that, like take the dogs for a long walk, maybe do a few auditions, but majority of the day to just like kind of just chill and have yeah. a replenishing recover day. And I think... Um, that's the beauty of when you get to a certain level where you're not scrambling for paychecks and you can kind of Mm -hmm. allow yourself. I mean, it takes so much work to get to that point. So, um, or, you know, build it in to your, to your schedule. I think it's so important. And I think that's something that I never have done before, but now I'm so aware of it. Yeah. Just say like, it's okay. And I try not to feel guilty about if there's a day where I just need to like really do nothing and take care of myself. If I'm just feeling not great that day, or I'm, I just really feel like I'm tired and I need to be gentle with myself. It's like, you know what, then maybe there is a day where I'm like, um, you know, should I just make some food and sit down, listen to some music, maybe watch TV, play a video game, whatever, go for a long walk, maybe see a friend for lunch. You know, that's also things keeping your social, you know, keeping your relationships uh, good, you know, like seeing friends and family and whoever. So I definitely think that that's also incorporated in my week, in my job. I mean, I know it's not part of my job, but I think it informs and it recharges you so that when you come back to do your job, you're fresh. Not like, oh my God, I've been sending in 20 auditions every day for three years straight and never taking a day off. And now I'm like exhausted and I can't even focus. So I I definitely think that's part of a good balanced career, I guess like work-life balance, if you want to call it that. But yeah, (laughs) I definitely think I have allowed myself and I would impart that a lot, all other people should allow themselves to take breaks and take days, like take a day. If you really need to take a full day and be like, I'm not working at yeah. all. Like, you know, I think it's so important. It's just going to make you fresh for the next day, you know? Truly. Yeah. That's something that I've, I've also had to learn that. Yeah. Especially since like taking the jump to just be like, this is this is my full-time job. Mm-hmm. This is it's paying the bills and it's yep. take, having an, a, something else to distract me on the other side while it's yeah. providing a little bit of money is not worth it. Mm-hmm. But it's easy to fall into that as somebody who like has entrepreneurial tendencies to get in that cycle mm-hmm. of I could be doing more, I could be doing more, I could be doing yeah. more instead of like just stopping me and saying, please stop. Mm-hmm. If like do your auditions, if you have a session, do the session. But if you have nothing scheduled for the day, then and I'm home, then like please hang out with me. Or mm-hmm. but if also if you're alone, go see your friend or just yeah. like turn your phone off and play an intent. Like she yeah. she has told me, like ha- ha- said the sentence, please just go play your game. Yeah. Just because it's gonna it's gonna bring life back into you. It's gonna like, yeah. get outside, go do something. Well, and, and also, it's okay to think- not be busy. Yeah. And if you think about it, too, if you're like, hey, I'm going to watch this animated show I haven't watched yet or like I'm going to play this video game. It's like those are also helpful for our job, too, which is kind of cool. Not a lot of people can Tax say deductible. that. Tax deductible. 
tax deductible and, uh, right. recreation. And, <laughs> right. And also think about how many coaches and classes you've taken that say, hey, if you're auditioning for Nickelodeon shows, if you're auditioning for Cartoon Network shows, if you're auditioning for Adult Swim shows, watch what's on right now. Yes. Because that's going to you inform have to. your... Because if you're going to do like... If you're going to get a Nickelodeon audition and try to audition with like wild and crazy voices that used to be in the 90s, you're not, probably not going to book it because th- that's not what's commercial. I mean, that's not what animations are right now. Yeah. They're much more grounded. They're much more realistic voices, kind of like your voice, but just maybe a little heightened here and there. Yeah. And that's something um, for people who are looking to get into voiceover, too. I've, mm-hmm. I've found that a lot of people think I can't do this because I don't mm-hmm. do what you do or I don't have like 40 voices on call or I don't make weird noises. Yeah. I'm like, you don't need to. And honestly, for a lot of like that's I wish at the beginning of my journey with all of this that I, mm-hmm. I didn't think about that or I couldn't do any of that because it would have made it so much easier to just narrow in on like, cool, I do trailers. I do really great commercial mm-hmm. reads or I am like this and this is what I do. The one thing yep. that like I can really focus in on and then branch out. Um, yeah, and you don't, I mean you don't I can't do any have... impressions, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm te- I'm horrible. I'm horrible at impressions. Like, yeah, even when I get voice maps, a terrible which is so impression. I know oh, it's a it. new character. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, even with like voice match, which is so interesting because I feel like with singing, I can imitate singers where it's like I can really feel like I sound like them. But for whatever uh-huh. reason, when I'm trying to do a voice match, nope, I'm just like, no, I still sound like me. For some reason, I just can't. So you know, there's something for everyone. You know, there are people who are just so skilled at voice match and impressions, and that's amazing. That's a whole yeah. other area that you could go to. But you know, I definitely think. You're right. It's not the it's not what it's not what you need to become a voice actor because they want you. They want your individuality. They want what your voice sounds like because everyone's voice sounds different. You know, it's even though we're going out for the same roles. I mean, not you and me necessarily, but like even though voice actors we are, are direct going out, competition. I know every audition I get. Yeah. I'm like, yep, this could be the one. But I know Alessandra is like two steps yep. ahead. <laughs> yep, I am. I'm just sending them in. I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? What's going on, I'm gonna man? I'm going to bury Tim in this audition. <laughs> I'm going to be Tim. I'm like, play way better boys than him. Yeah, man. <laughs> way better boys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no girls allowed. Yeah, gross. Um, <laughs> Sounds just like me. <laughs> Cooties. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, see, I just got der- derailed again. But, anyway, I don't know what I was saying. Do, 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 just do, lots of different do, opportunities do, 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 for everybody's do, 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 do. different yeah. skill sets. Yeah. 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 It's everyone's voice is different, even though we're competing or not competing, but even though we're sending in auditions, right, for the same projects and there's, you know, hundreds or thousands or whatever going for the same role. It's really not. I mean, obviously, you have to have some talent and some skill and some understanding of like generally what they're looking for when they're trying to cast someone. But at the same time, everyone's voice is so different. It's like, if they don't pick you, it's not, you know, hopefully it's not because you were not good, but it's just like, that's just not what they were thinking. That's not what they were hearing in their head. You Mm -hmm. know, that's just not what they were thinking. But then when they hear the right person, they're going to be like, Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually you will be for something. You will, mm -hmm. you are the right person for it. And it's just a matter of doing it and being around for long enough for people and putting yourself out there enough for people to know who you are and what you sound like. It's certainly the long game. It is not something that's just like you start voice acting and then you're immediately, you know, off to the races. It takes time, you know, because buyers are going to hear you a number of times probably before they book you on something because they want to see what you can do in different, given different specs and different capacities, you know. So I think it's sort of you have to be patient and you have to just kind of, uh, you have to have perseverance. You have to have grit. You just have to kind of go for yeah. it. Yeah. And with that rejection side of things, how do you handle the mental health? And like, how is how is your mental health journey progressed with? Or I guess, what is your relationship to mental health? I know you said you uh, mm-hmm. meditate, and I do. How has yeah, that I... progressed from when you started in voiceover and like to where you are now? What is that journey been on? Like learning to get rejected. I know as artists, we're very well versed in that. Yeah. So, Rejection yeah, and think, then finding that success, how have you navigated? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think um, that it's just part of the job. I think that's just what it is. Like, this is just our job to just kind of like to, you know, send out auditions and 
not hear back for like 99% of them. And then when you do, you're excited. But yeah, I think overall, that's just part of the job. And the sooner you can just send it in and like forget that it existed and not treat any of them preciously, I think then you're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard <laughs> to do that with something like I've, I found that I just like for auditioning for theater and stuff like that, it's as obviously good practice and auditioning mm-hmm. for TV film stuff is great practice. And, um, but, and, and now with voiceover, especially when, as, when you're receiving as many auditions as you are, you really mm-hmm. can't, you don't have a choice. No, you <laughs> there, don't have, there's, yeah. there's no capacity emotionally to, to give everything that weight that some, mm-hmm. that you did at the beginning. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, there are some projects, especially when they send the specs and they show the price and on, on the fees and stuff. And it's mm-hmm. hard not to go to that place of like, oh, that would it, be this nice. Could, imagining your entire life, basing the next three, five years of your life off of yeah. this one hypothetical booking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Do you still get an opportunity to incorporate music into your life with either voiceover or otherwise? Like gigging Not, with the band or you and Steve yeah. had a business for a while, right? Of mm-hmm. uh, writing songs for people. Yeah. Yeah. He had a business called Song Quest, which was awesome. And it's getting really hot in here. I open the door. Open it. I'm not used to having the light on for this long. So anyway, now my sound will sound not as great. It's but, This um, is a podcast. It's great. That's true. Okay. Uh, my door is open too for really Sue to come to in pee. and out. Is this bad? Oh my God, woman, go pee. We'll take a five minute pee. Just leave this open and we'll come back. We'll come Wait, back in seriously? five minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just leave it open. And, and But we'll, what are you we'll going to, are you going to edit it? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll cut starting okay. now. I am back, I am back, I am back, back, back. Oh, hi, I'm back. Oh, wait. There we uh, go. Oh, oh. I was like, what happened? I was on mute. It's fine. We're back. We're back. Thank you. I drank way too many liquids. It's all right. I did the same thing. I had, uh, do you know, I, 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 I probably asked you, do you know Nikki Robles? She's voice actor on Owl House out there. Uh, uh, yeah, I feel like I know that She called name. me a, a bevy bitch uh, because so of all of my beverages. beverages I bring into the studio. <laughs> I know. Yep, I... I have my coffee cup. I've got this. And then when I was doing that gig in August, I also had like an, a backup water and I had a giant Yeti full of mm-hmm. uh, warm water, lemon and honey. Yep. 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 I know. That's how we do. We're good. We're good. We're back. Um, but anyway, we're clear. More, more, to t- more to talk about the uh, rejection, right? Is that what we were talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where we left off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I feel like it is just part of the day and we just have to sort of i don't know just kind of deal with it and go well this wasn't for me and something will be for me and it really just is sort of patience and just knowing that you really want to do this that's what's going to eventually get you to where you need to be yep yeah something that i like to to say to myself that helps is it's it's this or something better Mm -hmm. but also i forgot we're talking about music too Yes. That is something that I feel like I, at, when we first went into lockdown, Steve and I were like, let's make music and post stuff and just like try to bring some joy because no one knows what's going on. So we did put a lot of like Instagram videos together. We would put out little beats and I'd be playing bass and sometimes singing and we'd put out little videos here and there. But I do think not that I'm like experiencing burnout or anything, but I do feel like a lot of the times, cause I'm putting so much into my auditions every single day that sometimes when I'm done for the day, it's hard for me to go, I'm going to go pick up my bass and I'm going to play something or I'm going to sing or I'm going to, sometimes I feel like it's really, truly hard. I feel like I need to kind of shut my creative brain off a little bit and just kind of go for a walk, take the dogs out, just kind of do nothing to to call a friend, whatever, or just kind of sit in silence. Cause I'm like, I've been talking all day. Um, yeah. So, but I do think that, you know, now that I have friends that are starting to play more shows and I'm actually going out more and seeing, you know, people and seeing music, I do feel like that is calling to me where I'll be like, you know what? I maybe want to play in a band again. I'd love to get my, I love to play bass and sing in a band again, or I'd love to be on some people's, like I did a lot of studio recordings back in New York too. I'd be on a lot of people's albums. And so I'd love to do that again too out here, especially because, you know, a lot of 
there's so many producers out here. A lot of hits are being made out yeah. here. I'd love to sing on some stuff. I mean, goal wise, I'd love to be like that one really high voice over like a Lord of the Rings esque kind of movie. You know, that one that's yes, just like the one Elven floating soprano. Above. Yeah, that's that's totally my <laughs> vibe, and I would love to do that. So that's like a bucket list thing. I think that would be cool to at one point to be able to do that. Have you ever gone to Hollywood Bowl or any other place that does the uh, the movies and when the orchestra plays live? I haven't been to, I mean, I've been to the Hollywood Bowl a number of times, but I haven't done that yet, but I think I would love that. I yeah. went, I have, I've never been to the Hollywood Bowl, but I, when, uh, growing up in the suburbs of Chicago, there's a, what is it called? Ravinia. And they, they'll have all those shows that come through. I went to go see, um, I went to a Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, uh, sc uh, screening where they did that. And they had the whole, like Chicago Symphony Orchestra was there playing, the score under everything and in that for one of the elven soprano things they had a soprano in the choir this like spotlight shot down and she was in this like yes. elven gown i was yes. like yes this is everything it's amazing yeah, my secret gonna, dream one of my dreams someday. is to do something like that but mm -hmm. it's nightmare before christmas Yes. And we do a whole cast of everybody dubbing the entire movie and singing the entire movie. And mm. I, like, it has been my dream since I was a little kid to do to voice Jack and, oh and to do that. I, I want to put it together it where we do we do like everything is dubbed live, but yes. with the animation play, because I think yes. it's so it's just so cool. I, I it's just my favorite that. movie. Um, so maybe, wait, that, but, maybe wait, wait, we'll put that you together. Do you watch it for Halloween or Christmas? Uh, all year long. Both? Okay. <laughs> it's an all holiday, it's an equal opportunity holiday consumption movie. That's true. I yeah, feel like some, yeah. I'm trying to think. I feel like we usually watch it for Halloween, but sometimes we'll also watch it for Christmas. Mm hmm. But I, I feel like Jess is more Halloween. of the mindset of a Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. And with our, now that we own a house, we started doing, this is the first Halloween that we'll, we've been in the house. Mm -hmm. And so she's been like super down with all the Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. And I'm yes. like, you have never been more attractive. Yeah, it's uh, it's but so it's like the whole theme for everything is like Nightmare Before Christmas and Minions, and I feel like I can like combine both that. of those for both holidays. Yes, <laughs> oh, I love that. That's cool. Yeah, I need to get my decorations going. Yeah, that and a little bit of Harry Potter as well. We, yeah. we do like the floating candles in the dining room and ooh, um, yeah, that's a good look. Yeah, it's fun. Again, big kids with adult money. This is what we do, and no kids. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Dogs. That's it. We've got a poodle with a mohawk and a bunch mm -hmm. of minion decorations. So yeah. We're, yeah, we're exactly. living that life. What else do you need? You got a house, you got dogs, you got money to spend on uh, video games and, you know, a lot of decorations and things like that. Yeah. Who needs anything else? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe a car? Car. Yep. That works. That's important in Texas mm -hmm. and L.A. especially. <laughs> Very important, although, you know, it's it's expensive, but it's worth yeah. it. Mm hmm. Well, what is what is next for you? I want to know what what's next for you, like either something independently that you're working on creatively mm -hmm. and uh, or work wise that you're excited about that you want to promote. Um, mm -hmm. And where can people find you? OK, well, that's a lot of things. What's next for me is I'm not really sure because I'm just going to keep doing what I do every day, auditioning and hopefully having some bookings and all that. Um, there is something that should be coming out, I don't know, probably in a month or two that okay. is. Uh, yeah, I don't even know how much I could say. So anyway. I, maybe I could probably send you the link because I remember when I went to the session last time, they were like, oh, you can share the link. You just can't share anything else. You could be like, I'm excited okay. to work yeah. on this project. So I'll anyway, post the link in the episode description so people can check it out and we won't say anything else other than that right now. Exactly. Just like, here's something I'm working on, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's the one thing. It's so cryptic. Like, everything, <laughs> everything new is so cryptic. We're like, there's this I had this to do that recently, too. And it's cool and... Here you go. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, people. I had to tell people like, hey, I'm disappearing for five weeks. They're like, oh, cool. What are you doing? I'm like, I can't tell you. And I know that's a total dick move that I just like hyped this up and yeah. I can't say anything about it. Um, but. <laughs> so that's probably what's next. Um, but um, yeah. And then my own creative projects. Um, not enough. Although, you know, I do take an acting class every Monday night, which is in person. And I get to work with 
amazing actors. And I will say that to me feels like what I'm doing creatively. Yeah. Um, even though it's not anything where like I'm putting out a product or I'm, you know, making content, it just feels like that's where I get to just kind of be really creative and try things and stumble and see like, you know, and this is, this is more like straight up acting. It's not a voiceover class. It's just, you know, picking scenes and working with your fellow partner and things like yeah. that. So that to me feels like what I'm doing creatively right now. And that's I like great. it because it's an, it's ongoing weekly class which has been really, really incredible for me. And uh, people can find me uh, on Instagram at Alessandra Voice. And uh, I think I'm that on TikTok, although like I don't really use TikTok that much to post. I'm more of uh -huh. just like the scroller, um, which I need to get hours back of my life because of that. Um, and then <laughs> I'm on Twitter, although, again, not really super active, but that's Alessandra Vox, V-O-X, because someone already has Alessandra Voice, and they're not even active. And Come I don't on. know how to, like, do that. You know, I don't know how to, like, get my thing back. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm not – I mean, probably Instagram I'm the most active on, but even that, I'm not super active. I feel like – uh yeah, kind of what we were talking about before, just sort of feeling sometimes like overwhelmed with social media or just overwhelmed with like feeling like you need to put out content and kind yeah. of be, you know, uh, forward facing all the time. I feel like a lot of the time I'm just sort of putting all my effort into just making sure I'm sending in good auditions and spending time with people that I love. And so, but yeah, I mean, I do I do post from time to time. I have like a series on Instagram that I do that's talking about words that I can't pronounce because either it's because I'm from New York and there's like an accent <laughs> or just words that like I really cannot say because I get tripped uh -huh. up like possib possibility. Like it sounds like I have like a speech impediment or, you know, like digital. I always get com like tongue twisted on. Those are words that like I just mm -hmm. say, oh, like forward instead of forward <laughs> anyway <laughs> so i like make some i make like reels like that where i'm just kind of poking fun at myself or just being like you know i'm from new york so i can't say these this word or yeah. like and when you're that, saying words other people's words all day sometimes words stop being words and it's just yeah. not why is this funny to me or why can't i say this simple four letter word yeah right it's like if you say fork enough like all of a sudden you're like is this a word and then you're like brain hurts and you're like fork fork Four existential crisis ensues. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I'll make little like funny stuff like that. And that's usually just it's just because I in the moment I'm like, this is funny to me and I'll post it and then, you know, it'll resonate with other people. And I think that's probably the best way to do it anyway. I agree. Try not to be so like formulaic and uh, I don't know. Obsessed about it. Yeah. So that's well, where before they can find I, I me. cut you loose, I, I have. Uh, I have four quick fire questions for you. Oh, oh, right. oh no. You got this. What was the nickname that you had in childhood? Royal Puppy Ship. <laughs> okay, please explain. Please. Oh my, so Rob Marrera's <laughs> nickname was Helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like, this wasn't a name that my friends gave me because I wasn't allowed to have a nickname. Because my parents were like, your name is Alessandra, and it's a beautiful Italian name, and do not let anyone give you a nickname. But my parents called me RP, or Royal Puppy Ship. And I don't know where that came from, other than I think it was just when I was a kid. They, like, must have thought that I was their little puppy or something. But, like, as a child, I don't know. Anyway, so they call me Royal Puppy Ship. So that's that. <laughs> you have, you've hit first place for <laughs> nicknames in all of yes! these shows. That's amazing. Royal puppy ship. I'm changing yeah. your name and my phone to that now. Yes. Uh, who inspires you right now? Um, probably. Who inspires me right now? Um, probably my parents because they made a move in their like late 60s, early 70s across the country to start a new life. And I feel like that's, I mean, not a new wow. life, but like to just sort of live their New best chapter. life. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like that's really inspiring because I think a lot of people would look at like, you know, once you hit a certain age, like why would you pick up and move and like start a whole new, you know, life somewhere else. But I feel like that's really inspiring. And maybe that is where I get my sort of like 
throw caution to the wind of just like, hey, it's just, just a life. It. Like, why not? Like, who cares about how old you are? I mean, granted, they also look like they're like in their mid 50s. So they're just kind of young spirited people anyway. But I feel like that's really inspiring. So that's what's inspiring me right now. I love it. Uh, what's a piece of content that you can't stop uh, getting enough of? Is it, uh, and it can be a book, it can be a TV show, it can be podcast, whatever you want it. Uh, well, I'm a huge fan of the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia podcast because that's like my favorite show, probably. It's so um, good. And just so listening I, to them hang out. Yeah. I love the po- I used to be a listener, but now I'm kind of a creep. I'm a listener and a creep. I don't know if you know that they call the watchers a creep creeps. Anyway. No. It's even that joke. You have to be there. <laughs> you have to be there. But anyway, so they call the watcher, they call the viewers creeps. So like I used to be only a, a listener because I'd listen to it in the car. But then there were a few episodes where they started showing clips and I'm like, I want to be a creep now and I want to watch them. Yeah. So that's one. I love it. And then uh um, I don't know. I kind of uh, I'm watching She Hulk right now with Steve, and we just yeah. finished um, Obi Wan on uh, on Disney nice. Plus. But yeah, I don't know. I kind of just like jump around with TV and things like that. But one Heard. piece of one I, I know actually what I'm, I can't get enough of is Mario Odyssey on the Nintendo Switch. Hey, yeah, yes, oh, it's I'm, such a beautiful game. It's a, I'm at the point where now I get to collect all the Power Moons, like go back nice. and collect more of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a satisfying thing. And oh, yeah. It's so frustrating. I won't ruin anything for you, but there are some that I'm like, I still haven't found, and I'm like, I don't, I can't, I've looked up guides, I've cheated, and I still can't yeah, get Yeah, no, there, there's some also that are just, like, too hard that I keep dying, especially when you have to, like, get those flowers that make you go super fast. Like, I always, like, fall off a cliff and whatever. Anyway, so there's just some that I'm like, I'm not going to get them, but, you know, I'm trying we my know best. know they're there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. Last question. You can only have pizza one more time. What's on it and where from? Oh, boy. Well, first of all, I have celiac disease, so I can't really eat pizza unless it's gluten-free. However, if I didn't have celiac disease, let's just go with the fantasy. Mm -hmm. I would go to Umberto's in New Hyde Park, which is on Long Island, which is the best pizza in the whole world, Umberto's. And I would probably just get a regular slice just because it's, like, traditional. Yeah. Boom. Love it. That's it. Alessandra Levy, thank you so much for doing this. It is such a joy anytime we get to hang out. And yes. um, I also uh, am really excited for the time that we actually get to hang out in person. That's one oh thing my God, I know we've talked that would about. Be that's amazing. been like we've just kind of like passed each other because we were in New York for a period yeah. of time at the same time mm-hmm. for like and a even lived of years in Astoria, right? When I was there. Yeah, yeah. What and the then heck? Started VO around the same time, and now it's yeah. But it'll it'll happen soon. I know it will. Okay, but, hugs uh, hugs in real life soon. Yes, yes. Thank you for doing this. I'll talk to you. Amazing. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Second Cup Extra Cup with my friend Alessandra Levy. Keep up to date on what Alessandra has going on. You can follow her on social media at Alessandra Voice on Instagram and TikTok and at Alessandra Vox on Twitter. I've also linked her website below in case you want to explore her demos or book her for work, which you should do because she's awesome. Second Cup is recorded and produced by Tim Heller Creative, LLC. If you enjoyed this episode or any of the previous ones, I invite you to show support for us in any of the following ways. First is by sharing episode links on social media and tagging at Tim Heller Creative. Second is by rating and leaving reviews in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you consume podcasts. Third is subscribing, liking, and commenting on our YouTube channel, Tim Heller Creative. And finally, if you want to support financially, you can Venmo me at Tim Heller Creative or reach out through email to Tim at TimHellerCreative.com to discuss sponsoring one or several episodes. All funds will be used to improve the show and provide the best experience for guests and listeners alike. Tune in next time for another incredible conversation and hopefully to learn something new from a really cool person. I bid you goodbye, good morrow, and toodles.